Hello and welcome back to The Secret Knowledge. You are listening to our final episode on Stephen Greer's documentary, Unacknowledged. To cap everything off, Allison lays out her final points, analyzing the film as both a piece of entertainment as well as the purveyor of important information that it claims itself to be. Out of all of our conversations about Unacknowledged, this one was easily my favorite. Thank you again for listening, and I hope you enjoy this final episode. We're coming to the end of our discussion about this documentary. My first thought is I can't believe how little we talked about Richard Doty. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to talk about Mirage Men and all his counterintelligence hijinks. I'm very surprised that it, that didn't play a larger role in our discussion, but that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, but in in reality, my, my true first takeaway is that I... I don't think that I leave this documentary thinking that Stephen Greer might not have any credible evidence on aliens. Like, I don't see this discussion as a Greer takedown. I just see it as, you know, discussing what our problems with his his rhetoric are. I mean, I think most days I wake up and I'm pretty sure that I believe in aliens, or at least I really want to believe in aliens and That's why I want to spend this time discussing what evidence feels like it could be more credible or or at least can't be explained away. And I I think that's what I'm really looking for in a discussion about aliens. Like, where is the evidence that we can say, okay, we've held a microscope to it and this is the stuff that we still don't have an explanation for. That's what I want to find. And unfortunately, Greer doesn't always give us that information, but he does oftentimes give us some really interesting information. I know that watching these documentaries exposed me to some interesting sources, some compelling individuals. Um, But my problem with Greer is ultimately about his approach to evidence and his presentation of that evidence and the way it's relayed is seems to be more important than the evidence or the information itself. And once again, it it tends to be about Greer. So I guess what I'm left with upon watching this documentary is that I guess I don't feel like we need to go case by case through all of the evidence. Um, This thing that he claims to have this gigantic stockpile of. We can spare ourselves this time because there's enough evidence that he presents as being incontrovertible. But he spends little to no time addressing what the controversial information is surrounding any given theory. I mean, as as Shane said, um, during the distrust of government sections, he's all about skepticism. But he can't deign to explain in a way any of the skepticism surrounding his own work. And, you know, good information. Information isn't going to be scared of criticism because it ends before it can get to a point beyond what it can assert. And that in and of itself is enough for us to say that we can't really care what Greer has to say. We can be entertained, but we already know that he's not a good steward of media. And because of that, we can't just take his claim seriously. He has to be ruled out because of that. And it's unfortunate But unless he reexamines himself by going through his archives under that, that microscope and addressing as many contrary claims as possible, we just kind of have to believe him behind as a source, which is sad because I'm not certain that he has no interesting or, or potentially credible information i i absolutely agree with what you said about greer and i would never want to say that i mean you can go to stephen greer's youtube channel and you can go to his website and like the interviews are there and i personally intend to listen to a good amount of them just because i'm curious to see what information he has gotten out of people Mm -hmm. um but as we found like in these documentary formats there are these misleading moments that seem to prey upon people's trust of him as he creates a stronger Mm -hmm. and stronger like mythos around himself. And, and, and again, that's really what we're pointing out here is like the rhetoric of this documentary and many of his other films, uh, serious would be a great one to talk about one day. Like there's something about it. That's just, it's not genuine enough for the claims it's trying to make. So yeah, and, and that I, I absolutely agree. That leads me to kind of my second takeaway, mm-hmm. which is that um, 
that in and of itself is enough to discount Greer in that we have to take into account that either knowingly or, I mean, he could be just bananas, in mm-hmm. which case he's inadvertently using these emotionally confusing mixed messages to, to deploy upon our emotional responses of us as the audience. But it doesn't really matter <laughs> if he's doing it on purpose or mm-hmm. if he's doing it accidentally. It could be a producer. Yeah, it could be. It, exactly. Because, you know, Despite saying there's no money to be made off of this, these documentaries produced by production companies are on the major streaming surface services of today. And that in and of itself tells us like they've been on those services mm-hmm. for years. Someone's cashing a check on this. And maybe, maybe, maybe it's not as big of a check to Greer as we would assume. But it probably is. But definitely someone is making money off of this. My, my third kind of ending takeaway on this is that Greer exhibits characteristics of a disreputable, megalomaniacal individual, which in and of itself isn't, isn't damning. Like, I think you could have a humongous ego and be producing this content and still have um, some, some information that is re- worthwhile. But in the greater context of the weird rhetoric he uses, we can't discount that he has these kind of personality traits, which, as you say, have led to him developing this whole host of individuals right. that are you know jumping on his bandwagon and and treating him like a god and and g- weeping in his arms for mm-hmm. his great service so maybe he is just a victim of his own obsessions but it, it's still weird the way it, all of this information is about greer the man mm-hmm. not about the information itself it becomes exceedingly worrisome when you look at his latest film, mm-hmm. um, the the Cosmic Hoax film, mm-hmm. which, again, we're not getting into that today at length. But that movie obviously uses, like, political rhetoric strategies of, like, you're either on this side or you're yes. on this side. And I think in the year 2021, like, that stuff is becoming so obvious mm-hmm. how Internet influencers use that to, like, build an audience and to build a, a, a passionate audience. Um I mean, anyone listening to this, go to any Stephen Greer video, start to read the comments and tell me there aren't some disillusioned people (laughs) in them. Like, and I'm sorry, I'm not trying to like make fun of people or like be mean about it. Mm -hmm. But this fan base isn't just like, hey, Greer, like, love your stuff. Like, can't wait for the next thing. It's like, you saved my life. I'm going to go to the aliens when I die. Like, thank you for enlightening every part of my being. Like, this isn't... Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's yeah it's not very normal yeah and and i think these tendencies to to misrepresent information is definitely associated with individuals of poor character and we can't we just can't ignore that even if it doesn't tell us anything conclusive about greer it at least should get our maybe he's an innocent man who film producers have taken advantage of Mm -hmm. i don't fucking know maybe they've painted him Mm -hmm. in a bad light i don't know Mm -hmm. all i know is he's associated with these products right and and that's what i can go off Mm -hmm. of And we at least have to be skeptical. And I think my final takeaway is that we might ultimately not be able to blame Greer for all of these grievances. And and part of the problem in and of itself is actually documentaries as a medium. They're both an ally and an enemy when it comes to presenting information. Um, Marshall McLuhan, one of my very favorite thinkers, says that the medium is the message, and the messages encoded within documentaries um, are designed to mesmerize our pathos at, at warp speed. So, you know, of course, information about extraterrestrials, something that hasn't <laughs> been proven, um, is going to be absolutely impossible to adequately convey within the given time frame of a documentary. Right. I mean, within two hours, like it's it's just not going to be probable. Um, but even if aliens are just this sort of collective hallucination or this sort of unrelenting, ever-evolving myth that our, our culture has put together, even if it's this, this hoax that the government has created, I really can't imagine how long it would take to explain all of the psychological and political motivations that could motivate a ruse of such magnitude. And documentaries just aren't going to allow the space for that or the time for that. Um, 
but they're attractive right now in in our culture of of wanting to consume media so quickly and mm. the lack of time that we have in our personal lives to to really investigate things um and especially because visual imagery is going to be you know visual imagery coupled with good cinematography mm. and the presumption that documentaries are are uh producing facts mm -hmm. and you know, music good editing video editing i mean and like inevitably are going to play with our emotions it's it's just unavoidable but that doesn't mean that it can't be minimized and there could definitely be fewer chunks of information in documentaries like this meaning there would be more time to explain connections or contextualize or interpret uh, source material credibility uh, and that's just something that doesn't happen here. I mean, Greer could be striving for simplicity that wouldn't call the quality of information into scrutiny. Um, perhaps people could argue that, that viewers just can't sustain that type of focus or right. connection to material, but... <laughs> There's a five-hour summary of iCarly called <laughs> I Binged iCarly produced by Quentin Reviews uh, on the internet that has over a million views. <laughs> so I, I, even though that's something that I can kind of take seriously, I, I just don't believe that people can't handle a slowdown. And in fact, mm -hmm. I, I really think we're starting to see a wave toward a desire for those slowdowns. Um, I, I think people are craving it now. So I think we have to to demand that anyone who wishes to have the privilege to relay information to the masses has to slow down and we mm -hmm. have to demand that from them yeah because the way we consume online video used to be very quick mm -hmm. very short um, i think a youtube video had a connotation of being 30 seconds yep. to a few minutes long there was a time where 10 if, minutes if you were a certain channel you couldn't exceed 10 minutes mm -hmm. 59 seconds uh, and that's not the case anymore. Mm -hmm. I've watched like two hours of that iCarly video mm -hmm. and I've watched it over the course of like a month mm -hmm. and I can't think of five iCarly episodes I've ever even seen. <laughs> same. Like, I, Absolutely I, same. I, I was more of a Drake and Josh fan. And when iCarly came out, I was a little bit past my Nickelodeon mm -hmm. years. Um, <laughs> I think you, you bring up some amazing points. I would quote one of my favorite people. Uh, Mr. Harry S. Plinkett, he says, I don't Plinkett. care if it's explained in a fucking book or whatever. We're, we're looking at the movie for what mm -hmm. it is. So, like, sure, maybe Greer is sitting on these things that would prove his case. But if he is committing to a 90-minute documentary, mm -hmm. that's still his own problem. Yeah. Uh, I don't care if it's in a book. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a movie that exists. Yeah. And he has four documentaries many of which repeat the same pieces oh God, of information yeah. with that amount of time he could have taken each documentary and only addressed three four five things instead right. of trying to address 16 17 18 19 20 things mm -hmm. and then maybe we could look at that information and say okay well i don't have the information i need to to know that that the aliens right. are out there but i can at least orient myself with what information feels like it's angling towards truth i also think i'd add that you know greer now has made at least four films the one that's most different is a cosmic host mm -hmm. hoax but serious close encounters of the fifth kind uh unacknowledged and even the end of cosmic hoax they all funnel toward the ce5 mm -hmm. protocols yep. so Maybe Greer, maybe this 10 part series yep. with Gaia, mm -hmm. maybe that's going to be the redemption of Greer. Right. Maybe Greer's grievances right. are, are going to maybe be redeemed. Maybe that's the, the slowdown that I'm looking for and I need from Greer. But I'm worried that I'm going to be watching a CE5 commercial. Yeah. That's, that's 10 hours that's long. That's going to be 10 oh, no. hours long. <laughs> well, we're coming for it and we're going to do it. So if you want to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, we're going to be watching all 10 episodes of Greer's new documentary on. Thank you so much, guys.